to go back to first principles probably makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, if if I have to ask you, Joe, if there was someone listening to the podcast and uh, they're lacking engagement at work, they're apathetic, they're looking for meaning, but they don't know how to get there. What's step one that you would recommend that they can take? Well, <clears throat> I think the first is to listen to that whisper. Because sometimes it's a scream, but sometimes it's a whisper, right? I think when we can't answer the question at the end of a, of a day or, or a call, a meeting, a task, and say, was that worth my life? Hmm. Literally. And I think the pandemic helped us sort of remember that this is going to be a blip. We're all going to be here a very short period of time. Cosmically, this is a bit of a joke uh, that we're making a mountain out of a molehill and a lot of different things, right? You know, given how short our lifespan is going to be. And so I do think that the commonality of just being a human is to, to have that feeling and to, to really honor it and not to judge it harshly, but to understand that if you don't feel like things are happening for you as opposed to to you. If you feel like you're in a place that you have to work as opposed to get to work. If you feel like you're working for money as opposed to coming from a place of, you know, this is, I'm doing this from a place of love and passion and sincere earnest to see something really big and amazing happen, then, then it's time to, I think, reset a bit. And so, you know, I talk about reset in my first book, which is just recognizing that you need one. Mm -hmm. Second is sort of exposing the elephant. So what, some of the elephants might be is maybe the manage the way you manage your finances. Maybe it's the, the fact that you haven't built your career or your skill set in the way that you need to. You know, and again, instead of like beating yourself up, you know, maybe just surrender to, okay, like we got a lot of time here to figure things out. Like there's always a new day to figure out how to decide something new. And, you know, I think there's a exercise that I talk about a lot, which is, you know, like the 25 reasons why. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? And the way I tell the story was I, I was 24, I think, at the time, and I was, um, I've done a lot of community work in Baltimore. It's been a big you know, part of my life um, is you know, outside of shift, you know, whether it's getting involved at, in not-for-profits not or boards. You know, I started a foundation, and one of this, these foundations was uh, a corporate mentoring program. So we would take kids out of the troubled schools and put them into these fancy you know, sort of elite organizations once a month. And, you know, you got basically a bunch of um, ethnically diverse uh, folks, uh, socioeconomically diverse. You know, we had kids that were, you know, had gone through things uh, with parents and pregnancies and things that like, you know, corporate America had never seen really up close and personal. We were trying to establish some trust between like the have and the have not, so to speak. And I remember just asking everybody like, so why are you guys here? And what do you want to be when you get older? And, you know, just the traditional sort of silly questions to ask and... You know, one of the kids I remember said, hey, uh, Mr. Joe, I want to be a, a chef. And so I was like taken back by this kid not wanting to be like an entertainer or a sports athlete or whatever, you know, because, again, it was my high school, actually, that this kid came from. And so to make a very, very, very 45 minute long story short, I said, well, why do you want to do this? Because a lot of people talk about their goals and their aspirations, but they don't say, as you know, it's why I would imagine people listen to this podcast is to get sparks or seeds of inspiration so that you can hear other people tell the story and go, well, I could do that too. Mm. But that only happens if you're around it. Like if you're not around it, this kid was not around it. This kid was in East Baltimore. He's going to walk home. He's going to see drug dealers. He's going to see people that are taking, to your point, the road, not less traveled, but most traveled in that kind of mm -hmm. situation. So mm -hmm. I just said, like, why? Like, you've got to find your reason why. And so his first, like, five or six reasons were money, clothes, home. I get a girl. That's why I want to be a chef. And I was just like, yeah. all right. It sounds like the conditioning. So why do you want to be a chef? And he's like, I don't know. So we just, we, I kept picking and peeling for, for it was about 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And he finally, at, at answer 23, because we were counting them, I'll never forget. He said, you know, I want to do this because I want to make my grandmother proud. Mm -hmm. And you could just feel it in the room. Sort of like, you know, when you hear the song Imagine by the Beatles? You yeah. Just, feel truth and authenticity. You may not love the song, but you're a weirdo if you don't. But you can feel that that song's not imitating anything. Mm. In the same way when you hear someone speak, I think we all have a little bit of a BS meter. And when he said that, that was as true as the song Imagine. 
and yeah. went on to say, I, I want to take care of my brothers and my sister. And I was like, wow, this is like nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and so this kid went on to be a chef. And, you know, I think it's at least that's what happened 15 years yeah. ago. So I don't know exactly yeah. where he is today, but the 25 reasons why is something we can all do. It's the prompt is why are you doing what you want to do or why are you not doing what you want to do and really peel the onion back. And so that you get to something that's more of an inner knowing and an inner truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of the kind of work Simon Sinek does and his, his, his book, why, and yep. kind of trying to peel the purpose back. 